Philippines on three, one, two, three. Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street, in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast. Starring your host, Dylan Jorgensen. Your co-host, Jason Outlaw. Johnny Soap. Music by yours truly, DJ Lenny Love Alfonso. Tonight's guest, from Ballard Consulting, Mike Ballard. From VegasRoots.org, Roz Brooks. Musical performance by Joshua Luna. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who just Googled what is the United States, Mr. Jason Alba. DJ Lenny Alfonso, let's hear it for him, huh? Yeah. Yes, good stuff, good stuff. How you doing, Lenny? I feel good. Welcome you, back. You feel good? How? Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I, I've been away for a little bit. It's, I brought the rain, though. Did you like that, <laughs> huh? Yeah, anyone else's car slowed away? No? No? Solid? No, too. Yeah, all right, good stuff. All right, yes, it's, it's, it's been rainy today. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, give yourselves a round of applause for being here. We appreciate it. I am one of your hosts, Jason Outlaw, and this is What's in the News. In Brazil, a 16-year-old boy died after masturbating 42 times. That's right. So grandma was wrong. It doesn't make you go blind. <laughs> it's true. It's true. There it is. It's true. <laughs> a, uh, a crash between a truck full of deli meat and a truck full of bread <laughs> caused, um, caused all the items to spill out onto the highway in New Jersey. That's right. Chris Christie declared a state of emergency. That's right. They reached out for comments uh, from Chris Christie, but he couldn't talk because his mouth was full. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwiches. It's so good. Let's <laughs> eat them. It's ridiculous, man. It's, it's yummy goodness all over the highway. All right. Um, Caitlyn Jenner is backing Donald Trump. That's right. Yep, saying he seems very behind the LGBT community. That's right. Yeah. The LGBT community said, Donald Trump can stand behind us. He just can't stand behind us. It's true. It's a That's what they said. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I bet you it glows in the dark. I don't, never mind. It's, it's orange coming at you. All right. Um, in South Korea, there is a contest to see who can do the least. That's right. The person who can sit for 90 minutes without doing anything and maintain the lowest heartbeat wins. That's right. They were shocked to find out that the winner stayed completely still the whole 90 minutes uh, because they were dead. <laughs> you, can, you can never have a slower heartbeat than a dead person. It's just, it, it happens. It happens. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, firefighters had to rescue a 15-year-old girl after her head got stuck inside a giant Barney head. You guys hear about this? Yeah, yeah. If you don't know who this girl is, she is soon to be the most, the most made fun of girl at school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Boy, that's, that's going to be a rough one. <laughs> uh, the popular 1960s show Lost in Space is getting a reboot. That's right, yes, yes. They said, however, they might change the name of the show to better reflect the current times. They're going to call it Lost for Ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of them. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> um, a naked man climbed to the top of the TKTS booth on Thursday morning in Times Square in New York. Woo! That's right. <laughs> That's when the 21-year-old uh, nudist uh, he uh, started ranting about wanting to meet Donald Trump. He broke out a few dance moves. Um, he taunted and spit at cops before flinging himself down to the pavement. Yeah, yeah. There's no joke to that. It's just funny. <laughs> it's just hilarious. <laughs> Could you imagine that? <laughs> He's like, I mean, was he moonwalking? Or <laughs> He's just like, ah! <laughs> you know. <laughs> Awesomeness, man. I want to be in New York. I want to be in New York. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Sandwiches. <laughs> it's my Chris Christie impersonation. That's it. Um, 
England, in a historic thing this week, England voted to remove itself from the EU. That's right. The next day, the most popular search was, what is the EU? That's right. <laughs> Just like in America, with the Democratic primary, when someone voted for Martin O'Malley, the next day they Googled, who is Martin O'Malley? <laughs> hey, we got a wonderful show for you guys. Give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso! Well, you're going to enjoy our next guest. He was actually named one of the top 20 visionaries in Nevada by Nevada Business Magazine. But, not, but, it, but his credentials don't end there. On top of it, he was also named one of the most ethical people in Las Vegas. So let's find out what this ethical visionary looks like. Please come on out. Mike Ballard. Hey. Welcome. Hey, what's going on? So good to have you. Exciting. You were born in Nellis Air Force Base. Tell me about how, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Air Force, yeah. Get the military thing. Yeah, so uh, explain, your, explain your upbringing real quick before we dive into the visionary stuff. So born at Nellis, when, I, when my parents basically brought me home from the hospital, it was just down the street at 18th and Lewis, okay. in an yeah. apartment complex where they were living at the time. Uh, I think my upbringing was a little different than a lot of people, though, here in Las Vegas in that... Uh, my dad was an alcoholic, and my oh. mom was a compulsive gambler. Yeah, and very so different. I very ended different. up having to move. <laughs> I ended I'm, never, up, <laughs> I'm really not even sure if that was a joke or not. Like, it's not a joke. Right, we do, no. have, a, we do have a lot of compulsive okay. gamblers and alcoholics here, but I still <laughs> think that that's not the normal. No, I, I went to five <laughs> elementary schools, Gosh. which was quite a learning experience. And this is because your dad's in the military? Jumping no, around. it oh, was just, all right here on the oh, east side of Vegas. Oh, you just got banned from four. We just kind of moved from one place to another for couple different reasons and you know I went to two middle schools and lived in lived in three homes in high school so uh, kind of a survival instinct for me was just having to make friends right uh, that was you. that was one of my challenges because especially in elementary school I mean young kid had to learn <clears throat> to adapt and you know, to be accepted and that type of thing. Okay, so kind of, so for a lot of people, the sort of riding the bike metaphor that when, she, when you learn something early on, it kind of sticks with you forever. Yeah. You think that's kind of how you are with yeah. meeting people? and so one, of the, one of the things, I guess, that I've been known for is just building a network and having, you know, being good at networking in the community. And I think that's helped me okay. from being kind of a ghetto kid to growing up and building businesses. So, so one thing I think might help some of our, our audience members is that they are – a lot of times people who have this great idea and, and they're really focused in on something and then they go to build a company and the building of the company requires so many more people to get on board. So what are some of the tips that you could share with them for you know, actually networking in sort of this correct? I think number one is, is understand what your product is and focus. Oftentimes I think too many, too many executives that I've worked with try to do too much and oftentimes test the market. Um, in, in smaller ways before you spend too much money. We, um, there's a term now in the industry, part of the lean startup methodology is develop a minimal viable product that you can put out there. A lot of the early adopters want something interesting and new and they don't need it to be perfect. They're willing to deal with a lot of flaws. And so start, you know, Put it out there. Don't wait and try wait, and make it perfect. Wait, you were named one of the top 20 visionaries, and you said just put out whatever? <laughs> That's like, you, you should be, I, I thought you were going to be like superstar vision. It's got to look like MacBook Pro, you know, like something like that. No, it doesn't have to be that way. All I right. think too often, the, the thing is just keep trying and keep testing. Don't give up. As far as, far as being a visionary, I think it's just being, pers uh, being perseverant, working diligently towards the goal. When you see a need and you know that it needs to be filled, don't stop till you fill it. Okay. Don't stop till you fill it. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So, okay, so another, another part of the intro, we talked about you being one of the more ethical people. I have a question about uh, how being ethical affects this, the odds of success. So on average, do companies that put being ethical at the core of their culture have a disadvantage? Not at all. I think it's just the opposite. I think it's a great you advantage. You think they have an advantage? An advantage. Okay. So often, so much of what we do in business is based on trust. Some of the people, most of the people we buy from, we develop a relationship of trust from. 
if somebody deceives us one or two times, if they lead us along one direction and we realize that the relationship's one-sided, we break it off over time. The sooner we can develop these relationships of trust by being ethical, by living you know, the Ten Commandments, you know, just the basic principles of success will benefit us all. People will want to, people will be attracted to you as you live by a core set of values. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I know that like when I meet people, whether I like them or not, I always tend to be more comfortable around them if I understand them and I feel like they're honestly talking to me. Yeah. Um, okay, so c kind of a side note, but uh, in, in game theory, if you've ever studied that, there's a, a something that I recommend everyone looks up called the prisoner's dilemma. And, and one of the best strategies Prisoners. for that is, yeah, prisoner's dilemma, one of the best strategies is called tit for tat. And it means always trust somebody first until they, they stop mm -hmm. trusting you. So uh, I would agree. It seems like it makes sense even mathematically. So, um, okay, so uh, you got these entrepreneurs in front of you. If you could tell them one thing to make them more successful, what would it be? Live your dream and stick to it Make modifications. As the market is giving you information, make modifications. Learn from it. Don't, don't be so stubborn and rigid that you don't learn from the market. But don't give up either. Just keep working at it. A lot of these overnight successes that we read about, when you really learn their stories, it took them 10 years or 7 years or 14 years to be an overnight success. Right. And it was a lot of struggle and a lot of sweat and a lot of tears. Right. But then, yeah, then the media comes along and just shows you the, the last few minutes of the story. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's so easy. Exactly. <laughs> it's been fun. I, I mean, right. one of my clients was a company that caught bad guys in the casinos through technology and facial recognition, a company called SRD. The company was started in 1984. And they had a great custom programming company, did a lot of great things. but. When I met them, they had seven employees. And I think they had been a little bigger before then and that type of thing. But they had gotten a lot of publicity for some amazing technology they developed in catching bad guys and that type of thing. And they even made a movie related to the technology called 21 with Kevin Spacey oh, okay. in it yes. about catching the MIT. Yeah. OK? Cool. Well, that was technology uh, developed in Vegas. And right. they knew it could be a much bigger thing. They had major companies asking them for help doing certain types of projects. And they needed to get to the next level. And the founder there knew that he needed help. He was humble enough to realize that I need some assistance breaking through that. And I was one of the first people that he called on to help him. And it was an exciting time for me, first as a consultant and then as the chief operating officer of the company, where we took this little company that when I first joined in, there were seven of us, and grew it to about 27 in a period of two years. And we received some funding from the CIA's venture capital firm, uh, which was pretty exciting. Good funding source. And uh, <laughs> this was just before September 11th. And so right after seven, September 11th, it took off. And, <clears throat> And then the company grew to a point where we needed more knowledge. And we found an executive here in town who had retired here at the Lakes, who had worked for IBM, had built a company, sold it, uh, sold it to IBM, and worked for them. And he just had a lot of great enterprise software experience. And the founder realized, look, I'm going to step down as CEO. And I'm going to let this oh, guy take over. Right, he the right and he thing, became right? the chief scientist of the company. And by his humility, his willingness to trust, the company was able to continue to take off. And it grew even more until they yeah. sold it to IBM. I, I've, I've, I've always been fascinated how some of the best entrepreneurs, when I read their biographies, have this mix between being so humble, juxtaposed, to being like so right. confident and you know, like positive it's going to work out, but then willing to change. So good example. Um, OK, so uh, you know, the last question is uh, about coaching. I want to talk about now you're doing this consulting, which might make sense for a lot of people here. But you had a passion for coaching. Could you just explain what that passion is, where it came from, and how you use it with your clients? Well, first of all, we've all had coaches in our lives, right? We, from when we're little kids, whether we're in dance, whether we're in baseball or football, a number of different things. We've had coaches that help mentor us through the process. You know, I've been fortunate to be involved in a lot of wonderful companies, seen a lot of great successes. I've also been involved with a few that didn't succeed and had some challenges. Um, 
And then I got involved. We started the Vegas Valley Angels, which is an angel investment shark tank type club for Las Vegas. And we helped fund about 24 companies over a period of 10 years and put in $16 million into those companies. And I've been able to see kind of those companies as they get money, have the ones that do well and the ones that don't. And so oftentimes, me as a coach now, I help people that get stuck somewhere. And I try to help them manage the process of getting to where they want to go because they don't quite see a couple issues that could be getting in their way. Right. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, I want to talk about uh, Mike Ballard Consulting, but also the Vegas Valley Angels. Where, um, where do people go if they want to um, learn more about the Angel Group? So the Angel Group, as it stood back then, dissolved. It's gone now. It's, okay. it's gone now. Okay, but there's okay. still an active Angel community in, you know, an Angel yeah. Group in the community, that, and a number of angels that are financing companies. And there's probably 300 active angel investors in this community that I'm keeping track of. And there's probably more than that. There are people here that retired from Silicon Valley to avoid taxes. Um, yeah. There's, there we go, right there. I, Mr. Eric, the incubator. <laughs> and uh, we've got a number of other folks here that are looking, as well as there's some family offices that have made investments. Uh, a lot, of, a number of the pioneer families in this community have written a number of checks to to startups. But it's important to recognize that they're trying to make money on the investment. Right, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the issue is you've got to present something that has a commensurate amount of reward tied to the risk that they're taking. Right. And that's the challenge. I often see some of us present too soon or over present, and it's obvious to the investor that you're reaching or you're not quite ready so yet. So if you've been, if you've been at a, an angel group behind the walls, and I know we're pretty over time, but do they, are they really only looking for people to swing for the fences? Like, is it always supposed to be a Google Facebook size thing? Or do you ever see them say, that's reasonable and it's got like a four or five X return potential so and, tip, and, you know, sign on it? Right. So over the 10 year period that we, we were writing checks, there were typically 80 companies that proposed to us every year. And we would let 20 present in front of the whole group, and then would typically invest in about two. Okay. One of them would get about 800,000, another one would get 100 to 300,000. Gotcha. And typically the smaller guy was one of those that wasn't swinging for the fences. Okay. But we thought it could get, you know, and there was, there was one or two members of the group that kind of had a passion for what that person was proposing. Gotcha. So, you need to be able to think big. It's important. I mean, when we made an investment in one company that has done a licensing agreement with Microsoft, we put in 1.4 million, I think, in two tranches over a period of a year at about a $4 million valuation. So we ended up, because of different valuations between the two different investments, owning about uh, 25, 30 percent of the company. Right. Got it. But all right, so people can check you out at BallardConsulting.net. Exactly. Okay. And what what can they find there? Well, we've got a few different uh, resources on there about how to use tax credit financing or uh, our book list that we recommend you look at. You know, typically when a company approaches me, I ask them to do something first before I'll really, you know, would you mind buying so this book? Tell them to do something, they're giving you the money. You know, but even before I, so even before I do consulting with them, yeah. I ask them, look at this book. Will you read at least three chapters of this and then come see me? Or, you know, will you oh, write okay. three paragraphs for this? And let's, you know. Try me, what's a good book? I'll read three paragraphs of a book. I think the first one, if you're an entrepreneur looking to grow a business, one that I love is The Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Art of the Start by Guy Kawasaki. I thought you were going to go the Peter Drucker route because you had nope. your quote from before. I had my quote from before. Yeah, that's good. But um, okay, so I think we're out of time, but thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. Let's give a big round of applause. Mike Ballard, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Give it up. inspirational speaker. She's a medical missionary. She is a community activist. She is Roz Brooks. Give it up, everybody. What's up, girl? 
You look amazing. Oh, wow. Come sit down with me. So, Roz. So, Roz, word on the street is that you got voted Citizen of the Month of June for Las Vegas. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, June's over, but. <laughs> But nonetheless, I congrats. I got short in two weeks, that, I think. Right on. Hey, hey. Cool. Hey, they did that to me with Employee of the Month, so I, I feel you, girl. <laughs> I feel you. But, you know, that must, must be such an honor to get such an yeah, award. Tell really me a little works. bit about the ceremony and the process of it all. Well, I got called from the city, city hall and saying, or the city councilman saying that I was going to get an award for doing all the good stuff that I do around the community. So I went yes. in. I had no idea. I thought it was going to be a big check with a little check that I put in my Did pocket. Did you get scared when they called you? Or were you like, oh, crap, they got me on them parking tickets? Like, so no. <laughs> I lead such an ethical life, uh. according to Ballard. Go you know. green. Yeah. <laughs> So I went down and really, really, really awesome. I, I had no idea. They I even mean, had like a sign with your name on it right in front of City Hall. It's on so Main dope. Street, y'all. Yeah. Main Street. <laughs> it's my favorite street. Well, aside from yeah. being Citizen of the Month here in Las Vegas, um, you know, you're also known as a health advocate. Mm -hmm. You founded Vegas Roots, which is a community garden here in Las Vegas in 2010. Now. Yes. When you started that, was that just as a, you know, to start a place where people can grow, you know, fresh fruits and veggies, or is there more to it than that? Actually, it started with that. That was, um, Vegas Roots was the first public community garden here in the city, and the land is five acres, and it was donated to me, and I just thought that it would be really cool. To, I was born and raised in Las Vegas, knew nothing about gardening or growing or hadn't done any of that, and most of the kids here had, you know, they just don't get that opportunity. Is it a fun place to, like, take kids to, like, you know, learn? Oh, it's really fun. Here? We have a playground. We have chickens. We have a walking track. We have a fruit tree orchard. Definitely come by to play on we the have, playground. We have, we just, here, we just got our pizza oven built, so we do. It is so cool. Pizza party. It's an Adobe, <laughs> a, Adobe pizza oven. We do vegan pizza. We're going to have a, vegan actually, pizza. a, see, as a vegan, 4th of July, my husband and I hate. We start, like, now going, how many invitations do we get? Because we, we're never going to get an invitation to a barbecue, like, ever. Mm. And so, you know, we tease each other, like, um, how many did we get? Did we get two today? Did we get three? He's like, you know nobody called us. <laughs> <laughs> and generally they don't. But this Saturday, we're going to have a vegan barbecue at the garden. Yeah. I don't need an invitation. I'm inviting myself. Right on. All right, well, uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, we were talking about earlier was the eight laws of health. Now, mm -hmm. um, I remember talking about it, but I don't remember them because as far as laws go, I try to remember the, like, more <laughs> sketchy ones and stuff. You can tell by my, my midsection that I don't really pay attention to the health laws and right. stuff. But uh, what, what exactly are they? And, you know, how does one implement them into their everyday life? So, basically, um, I teach health and wellness around the community and the eight laws of health is the foundation for just living a healthy lifestyle and being cancer free and disease free and so there are things like water exercise nutrition fresh air I don't do any of that <laughs> <laughs> i netflix and chill <laughs> no and and so you'd be surprised to know that 20 minutes a day you definitely should be sitting in direct sunlight not like passing through i'm running errands i'm in and out i'm walking in the park because in las vegas we have a really really high rate of vitamin d deficiency Ooh. even though we have a ton of sunlight so that just proves running through the sun is not enough so that you've actually got to plant your behind is? in front of the sun and just allow, because the sun is really healing to the body. And it's really interesting that the um, medical industry vilifies the sun, stay out of the sun, stay out of the sun, slather chemicals on you, SPF chemical one, SPF death two, you know, all of that. <laughs> But as soon as you get cancer, they put you out in the sun because it's very healing to the body. So. Okay. Well, all right. Say I wanted a little bit more vitamin D in my life, and I don't like drinking milk because I don't like milk. It's well, gross. you shouldn't drink milk anyway. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably. It's will not a good source of it's vitamin D, but it's a trillion. If I sit industry. outside and sunbathe for 20 minutes, exactly. 
20 well, minutes a day. All right. That'll definitely improve I your I probably vitamin. still won't do that Before, <laughs> you know, before 9, and it used to be in the wintertime after 3. Now it's kind of like after, I don't know, maybe 6. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, tell me a little bit more about the side projects that you're up to, you know, besides riding awesome motorcycles and stuff. This yeah. girl pops wheelies, dude. Yeah. I swear <laughs> she does. Yeah. We're going to ride out to Laughlin. I swear for that Laughlin River run. But, um... But yeah, you're on a me. Harley, right? You got TV, I wish a I microwave, was. a cup holder. I, I'm more on that moped uh -uh. budget. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. So. Oh, gosh. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, but yeah, I, tell me a little bit more. I, uh, you told me that you were doing a, a mobile farmer's garden. What's that yeah, all about? Yeah, mobile That's farmer's market. So getting the community into the garden is quite challenging. You know, we have too much alcohol and burgers and we got so much other stuff going on that coming into the beginning but Sorry. so to counter that we are taking the garden to the street so i just started a mobile farmer's market called the veggie buck truck uh -huh. and <laughs> Yeah, so we actually will go into a neighborhood, into a community, into senior home um, apartment complexes. We set up a table, we have tents, we have a scale, we have all kinds of awesome produce and fruits and veggies. Uh, we have our reggae music right going. We have misters that are Got around my the tent. On that, uh, and people can service. just come through and shop. It's really, really, really cool. That's cool. So you guys, you guys come through in a truck and set up all these tents and everything? Yeah, That's yeah. So it's literally cool. like a mobile farmer's market. So we launched it two weeks ago, and it's, wow. it's, it's doing really well. Is it doing great in the heat, though? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Well, you should see. The garden is totally green. Yeah, the garden is totally green right now. Yeah, so is my mason jar. <laughs> <laughs> it really is yeah. quite easy to grow food here in Las yeah. Vegas. Well, I'm going to throw a little bit of a wild card on you just because I like to. Right, and we're cool. going to play a little game called Vegan or Not. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Vegan or Not. And basically, <laughs> the way we're going to play this game and uh, the stipulations of it, we're we're going to have a bunch of celebrities pop up, and you're going to guess whether they're vegan or not. Nah. Okay. So go ahead and put the first one up. Vegan. Yeah? Ooh. I was guessing not. She looks like she would power through a Whopper. Yeah. She looked like she eating meat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Probably not, but... <laughs> Hmm? What about this guy? He looks like he eats a, a vegan steak. Eat a no, he ain't. What? Ah! Get out of here with that lumberjack beard, dude. Ugh. Um, nah. Nah. Thank goodness. <laughs> Give us a bad name. <laughs> Game of Thrones, dude. Nah. Nah. Vegan. Oh, okay. You gotta throw me a carnivore every now and then. What's going Ooh, on, man? <laughs> see a... Vegan. I see a meat in her... What? I know you thought you saw some chicken under there. I could have. <laughs> chicken leg hanging out. Uh, nah. Definitely not. Come on. Yeah. My girl. Well, that was a trick, because she went vegan for a little while. So. <laughs> All right, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, Definitely not. Vegan. Are you kidding me? Uh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> vegan. Vegan. Dude, totally. Are you kidding me? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Vegan. Definitely. Who is it? Uma yeah. Thurman. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, uh, she, nah. She, 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 She's got a sharp knife to cut meat, specifically. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. I'm thinking nah. Nah? Dad. Yeah. That one had me sweating. Mm. Nah, she looked basic. Nope. Nah? <laughs> nah. Okay, nah. Definitely nah. Yeah. yeah, she got a little acne going on. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. nah. Kobe. Nah. Nah. Kobe. Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> Al Gore. Nah. Not with them three chins. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Go get me a steak. I need some meat. 
<laughs> I don't even want to be. <laughs> oh. Well, definitely want a lifetime supply of JoJo's jerky. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I did. I'm just kidding. Well, that's the end of our segment for this one. But uh, is there anywhere that everybody could reach you if they want to get involved into the Vegas yes, Roots and whatnot? Yes. Our website is VegasRoots.org, and we are located about five minutes from here, actually, off of Bonanza and Martin Luther King on Tonopah Street. And on Facebook, we tell everything that we got coming up and what we got going on. So we're facebook.com slash Vegas Roots. Well, you've definitely got me convinced that I need to start living a healthier life. And you know what? I think I'm going to pop into the garden one of these days okay. when you're in there, okay? okay? All right, well, that's it for this segment, guys. Uh, stay tuned for our entertainment segment next. Yeah! Joshua Luna. Okay, this first this song is called How Can I Live Without You? I once was lost, but now I'm found. How you came around and my life's forever changed Oh, nor I'd be without you Cause I lost my mind before you Breathe new life into me now surely will never fail I'm spilling all my secrets Tear down all the walls I trust in you so please believe in me Now I don't know what you're thinking but it's worth it if we make it How can I live without you? You search my soul And you can see right through me How can I live without you? You're all I can see The only one I need How can I live without you? How can I live without you? The story goes happily ever after, but this ain't no fairy tale. Cause I saw the stars align when we crossed our crooked paths. I knew we were meant to be. Now I'm spilling all my secrets, tear down all the walls. I trust in you, so please believe in me. Now I don't know what you're thinking, but it's worth it if we make it, darling. How can I live without you? You search my soul. Life has changed since you came into my world. It's all because of you that I'll never be the same. It's all or nothing here. I'll give you all I got to give. How can I live without you? You search my soul.
Right on, right on. That was awesome. Where can we find more of your music, Joshua? Oh, you can find find more of my music on my YouTube, which is um, which is uh, if you search my name, Joshua Luna, you'll basically see my face plastered all over the front page. All right. So that's my main source of music right now. You can also find me on Twitter, which is Luna B Joshua on Instagram, also Luna B Joshua, and Facebook.com/slash Luna Joshua Music. Right on, Ronnie. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew, to all you podcasts and all. Remember, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night, 9 p.m. right here at the East Fire Theater. Party with us on the rooftop for the after party. Catch me at the downtown cocktail room for the after after party. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, at Downtown Podcast. Thank you. Salamat. Salamat. Peace. Love. Be kind to one another. It's a wrap. <laughs>